Hi, Trevor here, reflecting on live stream music. Thank you for stopping by. Well, come in again today. You're very, very welcome. How awesome to see you all here. I trust you and Lord enjoyed my last video from Punk Rockers Green Day. And through this song, uh, Time of Our Life, we looked at making the most of the moments, even if we just have to shake things up a little bit. So trust you found that one encouraging. Well, we're going from there to, well, a duo that are a completely different to Green Day. Um, Charles and David, they met in 1963. Um, but um, they were, you know, doing the both individual thing in the, in the, in the music scene and they thought, well, um, and so they just did that. But they ended up writing songs until 1972. In fact, it was Charles, um, he uh, toured the US for a while with the band and he had to put on the kind of this American accent thing and, he, and after a while it's really, really grated on him. He said, hang on a minute, I've got this pretty cool accent thing going on here. Why do I need to put on an American accent? Surely the world will love the Cockney, Cockney rebel that I am. And so when he got back from America, he contacted Dave and said, Hey, Dave, you know what? I, you know, I play bass um, and uh, you play piano. Let's get together and start writing songs and let's just be ourselves and have a bit of fun and kind of you know, take over the world a little bit. So they absolutely did that. And so Chaz and Dave were formed. Now, Chaz and Dave, the name apparently came from the record producer who, whenever they'd come into the studio, he'd say, hey, here comes Chaz and Dave. And someone said, hey, what a great name for a group. And so Chaz and Dave became the name. These two were signed to EMI Records in 1977. So there we go. Um, and so in 1978, out came the album Rockney. Now, let's just put a bit of context here. Cockney accents, rock music. Rockney. In fact, these guys pretty much created a genre all of their own, pretty much, and um, enabled, and just the world just really resonated um, for a time with these guys, absolutely. Um, off the album, we've got a strumming. So here you see the Cockney twang happening. You see the sense of, um, just the sense of fun these guys have on stage as well. Um, Chaz just uh, introduces the song and so, so well. This song's a little bit of an autobiographical piece about him picking up the guitar and nobody liking what he was doing, but he did it anyway. So there's something quite cute about uh, the live version of Strummin'. Um, and 1980, out come the album Don't Give a Monkeys. <laughs> you see where we're going here, right? Live clip of Rabbit. Now, rabbit is a slang for somebody who just talks the whole time and does not shut up. And so it's all very, very nice to, to have this beautiful relationship. But if it's just talking the whole time, it can be a bit of a frustration. And so uh, we've got a live version of that one. But you can't talk about um, Chaz and Dave without talking about the 1982 mega hit, Ain't No Pleasing You. This came off the album Mustn't Grumble. So we've had Rockney, Don't Give a Monkeys, and Mustn't Grumble as album names. Um, Ain't No Pleasing You um, was a massive a song for these two. It, it um, stayed in the UK chart for 11 weeks. It got to number two in the UK and number three in Ireland. I reckon it did pretty well over here in Australia as well. <clears throat> and so um, there's just something so extravagantly over the top about this official clip. We've got these two just guys with an orchestra. <laughs> so when, when the record company heard this song, they thought, right, we're going to go all out with the production here because we, we might have an amazing hit here for some particular reason. And so they did that. And in the minute you've got a bit of an orchestra doing what you're doing, um, it really, really just capitalised on this song. The, the bittersweet tale of a guy that didn't, that doesn't matter what he does, or how he is, there's just no pleasing her. <laughs> or, of course, we can put it on the other side of the coin too about, you know, she does all she does and there's no pleasing him. And so this is kind of where I want to go today. There are, there are interesting um, takes on the online dating scene. Not that I'm in it as yet, but um, 
or you know the speed dating where where once someone says oh like I want this I want that I want that. I need someone with brown eyes brown hair they need to be slim they need to be funny they need to be this they need to be that they need to be something else they need to be something else man what a lot of effort they're so prescriptive about what they want uh, don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with saying what we want but you know what people are people <laughs> and you know I'm sure you wouldn't tick all the boxes for somebody else either. And so we don't want to make it so, so hard for ourselves that we, we, we put all these conditions on, on a new relationship. Surely a person's just a person and, you know, you, you get to know them and, and see what happens as opposed to saying, well, I need all these ticks, boxes ticked before I even go there. Well, I don't know about you. I don't think I would tick every box for somebody and, you know, but because you know what, it's all about compromise and just getting to know someone as opposed to just... Oh, I go bang, 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 bang. Oh boy, oh boy, it's the strange world we're in right now. Absolutely. And when we can, with shows like The Bachelor and Bachelorette, where every breath and every smile is analysed to the to the most finite of degrees, you know, it's become a bit of a challenge um, just to be ourselves. Surely what we want is we want comfort and ease and not walking on eggshells around each other. But that's what we want, don't we? We don't want all this prescriptiveness in there because... I'm sure this feeling that we have of having to tick all these boxes, that just carries through. You think, well, I wonder if I'm good enough for this person. And all you need is someone who kind of continues to put conditions on things and, and never clearly getting there, that, that it never really works and it becomes too much of a challenge. So don't we want to have a, take a deep breath and go, oh, I'm just really glad to be with you right now. You love me for who I am, warts and all, as and and... As I've discovered of late, you, you, you also got to actually say, hey, look, I'm here too. Um, hopefully each person is looking after each person and, and it, it works that way. It can work really, really well. But we don't want to get in a situation where we ain't being, we can't be pleased no matter what the other person tries. It's just too much effort. And eventually the person will just give up. You know, let's look at just talking as a classic example. If you talk, if, so, if, if someone says something, the other person doesn't really listen or says no straight away, the other person just gives up. It's just too hard. <laughs> so let's not get into that ain't no pleasing you stuff, hey? Let's make it as easy as we can. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to have relationships that are hard work. We really, really don't. We want them to be the easiest thing we can be as opposed to putting all these conditions on them. And because, you know, are you going to, if you've got all these conditions, as an example, and are you going to like be walking down the street and see see this person and think, oh yeah, that's the one. Are you going to go up to him and say, hey, you're the one? <laughs> Not going to work that way, does it? So I don't know how we do this, but we've got to give people a chance. So we've got an official and live version of Ain't No Pleasing You. And I just thought for a bit of fun, I, if we go to Ice Age, I can't remember which movie it was, Scrat and Scratchette, there's a scene where he's pushing the sofa around and she says, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I thought I would just add that one in there. Now, obviously, you could return it around the other way. It could be not that a girl would move her couch around, but a girl could be doing something, guys, going nah, nah, nah. So uh, very, very important that we keep both sides of the ledger going at the same time here. But it can be frustrating, absolutely, as Scrat down. And, you know, and as you see in this clip, he gives up too. <laughs> but then it explodes after that. So, so I just thought I'd chuck what, that one in there as a bit, of a, um, a bit of a classic clip of the Ain't No Pleasing You moments. Now, Chaz and Dave were... Now, Chaz left us in 2018 at the age of 74, which was a bit, was a bit sad. But between 1974 and 2018, you thought these guys were one-hit one wonders, right? 43 releases. That's like albums, best ofs, and all the rest of it. 43 releases. Who would have thought, hey? And when I counted up the singles, and I'm sure there's some, some remixes and remakes in there, I counted 50. So that's a lot of output, right, for this duo. And 1974 to 2018 is 26 plus, 26 plus 18. What's that? Um... Oh, let me think, 26, uh, 46, oh, fifth, yeah, quite a long time, really. So it's a long time to be around. 
And so these guys have had a pretty amazing career, really. And good on you for, for just keeping giving your Cockney, Rockney genre to the world. So the links to those, how many have we got? Five clips are in the description below. And I've also included my last video on Green Day. So if you want to recap on those punk rockers, just for something completely different, um, feel free. Well, I trust you've been encouraged today. Let's make it as easy as we can for our beloved. Hey, we don't want to make it difficult for them. Um, if you're sitting down watching this video together and you're squirming a little bit at that moment, turn the video off, talk to each other about it and say, hey, how can we do this thing differently before it's too late? <laughs> but in, 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 in the, uh, to quote Chaz and Dave's style, let's have a bit of fun. Hey, let's have a bit of fun laughter and ease at the same time so um i trust you've been encouraged that's it for today next time we're going to get on to the cutting crew so until then i'll catch you around bye for now